Now it's time to get into the more advanced topics of crosshair placement that are going to require a bit more game knowledge to implement. As we mentioned, if you're a beginner, we just recommend aiming for head level. However, if you're a more advanced player who's looking to improve their game, this video is for you. Now, as we mentioned in the previous video, of course your vertical crosshair placement is important, but something that is equally as important that you may not realize is actually your horizontal crosshair placement. Specifically, you'll want to account for this whenever you're holding an angle because you need to think about how far the target is going to swing you when they actually peek. It's important to keep in mind that there are a lot of ways that a player can peek. They can jiggle peek, they can wide swing, they can jump peek you, they can short peek. Depending on which of these peaks you think they're going to use, you'll want to adjust your crosshair placement to match it. This is where a lot of players mess up when they think that they have good crosshair placement. The distance that you place your crosshair is so important because if you aim too close, an enemy might just swing right past your crosshair and force you to adjust. However, if you're aiming too far and they swing short, you're going to have to swing all the way back and it might just catch you off guard and lose you the gunfight. This is why it's so important to find that healthy balance where you don't need to worry as much about either of these dangers. FNS was noted in terms of utility or anything before that, but absolutely makes it work and oh, hey, actually no. with another miss. Zest is gonna punish you. This isn't where it ends though. Honestly, there are tons of aspects of crosshair placement to explore. For example, one of the more difficult things that players don't understand is how to adapt their crosshair placement on the fly. A situation where you might need to do this is if your Sova, say, shoots a recon on the wall and then the recon is pinging everybody in an area and it's cleared things for you, so you don't need to clear those things yourself. If a Sova dart tells you that nobody is in that corner on your right, that means that when you're approaching the corner on your right, you don't need to look at it. Instead, what you should be doing is aiming at that next possible angle that the dart didn't clear for you so that you can be as prepared for the fight as possible. Finally, it's time for us to talk about the two types of crosshair placement that you're going to want to implement when you're clearing angles as a player. First off, we're going to be talking about pre-aiming and when you should use it. Pre Aiming is one of the two fundamental types of crosshair placement that you'll be utilizing when you're clearing angles. Basically what this refers to is not aiming at the angle at which you think that somebody will swing you. What you want to do is aim at the angle where you want your crosshair to be positioned when you swing the angle. This makes it so you need to do very little aim work when you're actually peaking angles because if somebody's playing on an on angle, your crosshair will be positioned perfectly to take them out. A player who has very good pre-aim is generally going to be a player who has very good map knowledge and understands what the angles are going to look like before they peak them. There is a big weakness to pre-aiming though, and that is if you're constantly aiming at the angles where players are going to be, then you are very susceptible to the off angles that players can play, or if a player decides to swing you. We'll go over off angles a bit more in the future, but basically what you need to know is that pre-aiming is a very bad idea if you think that there's a threat that an enemy is going to be pushing you. Since pre-aiming generally requires your crosshair to be hanging inside the wall, as we've talked about in the past, this isn't very good crosshair placement. As such, we only really recommend using this tactic if you think the enemy team is going to be playing pretty passive or they're just gonna be holding on angles. As you can imagine, if instead you're worried about them being aggressive, what you'll want to do is more utilize tracing. This is going to require you to keep your crosshair on the corner of the wall as you walk around it. By keeping your crosshair on the corner of the wall, you'll be able to walk around clearing every single angle along the way, and then if by chance somebody does swing you, you'll be more prepared to deal with it. It's going to take you a lot of practice to master both of these mechanics, but it's definitely worth putting the time to do so. Even at the top level, players constantly have to adjust their crosshair placement, so don't get discouraged if you don't get this down right away. Make sure you're at your desk though, because in the next video we will have another activity that you can use to help you practice your crosshair placement. 